If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk, and I do not accept the responsibility. Make sure you press the follow button on my Instagram, as if you were my ex pushing my buttons. What's going on, everyone? I'm going to do the, the question answering, because I posted something on the YouTube community, and now we're just going to essentially read the questions that people put on here. Uh, and I'll give you an answer to it back. So, the first one is from Kyle Hurley, 6420. Thank you, Kyle, for putting this message on here. Would you ever consider doing a collab with Lab Coats? He did several collabs back in his high school voltage days, so I'm sure he'd be open to it, and it'd be nice to see the two biggest USA chemistry YouTubers doing a project together. I don't know if we, are we the two biggest USA ones? I know there's a huge amount of Canadian ones. Uh, if we are the two biggest USA ones, dubs in the chat, guys. If not, then it's L's in the chat. Um, but yeah, I would 100% be open to doing a collab with him. He, he's a very cool guy. I remember when we, um, when we first kind of linked up on Discord, uh, he, you know, we decided to do a call, uh, and I never showed my face to anybody yet, so I'm just like, ah, I don't really care, you know, fuck it. And so we get on the, the Discord call, and I could just sense that the insane sexual attention that we had together uh, when we were talking, we got to just, you know, get to know each other a little bit, stuff like that. Uh, it's a little awkward at first, just because, you know, I'm a very awkward person myself, and he's, you know, he might be a little awkward at first too, right? That's just kind of how it is when you first meet strangers uh, online, which I usually like to do. Usually I go into a white van after that, but I mean, that's about it. But yeah, it was really cool. Uh, we got to know each other a little bit. So I would 1000% want to do a collab with him. Uh, he just lives, you know, a pretty big distance away from me. So eventually I would like to, to go out to different places, do interviews with people, uh, and just kind of get to know chemistry around the States and, uh, and around the world. So I'm totally down. Next question is from Doc Spaghetti 7118 it Says, hey man, love your content. Thank you, Doc Spaghetti. Uh, he said, I just wanted to ask, how long did it take to gather all the supplies necessary for home chemistry? And how would you suggest a complete novice get started? Well, it took quite some time and I'm still gathering uh, equipment for chemistry. So it's not just a, how long does it take? It's just like, you're always gonna be acquiring stuff. Something is going to break, something else that you want is going to be out there. So you're always gonna acquire stuff. Now for basic chemistry stuff, all I would say is get some beakers, get a hot plate, um, maybe get uh, a heating mantle, you know, but you don't necessarily need that in the beginning. Uh, and a distillation setup, and that's pretty much it. I mean, beakers, heating mantle, uh, hot plate. Yeah, I mean, that's really all, all you need. Um, distillation setup is probably one of the biggest things that you're gonna do, especially if you're doing organic chemistry. So I would say definitely get a really, really good solid distillation uh, setup and not one that's gonna break in like two seconds. So I'd probably get that. Uh, what was the second question? Oh, how would you suggest a complete novice get started? Well. I mean, I think Nyred did do a video about that too, but if you're really trying to get started in chemistry, all I would recommend is do your research beforehand, make sure you know the safety beforehand. Uh, and what, what that means is essentially, if something goes wrong, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna clean this up or what am I gonna do, right? Let's say you're using a very toxic chemical and it spills. Well, shit, what do I do now? Mm, you know, either you run, I mean, you should run, number one. But you know, there's some other precautionary things that you can do to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, especially if you're working with like bromine or chlorine gas. Uh, I mean, especially fluorine, which I don't recommend anybody does that if you're a novice. Um, but don't, yeah, just just figure out what project you're gonna do. Find out all the research behind it, how it works, what's the mechanisms. Um, do the safety for it, and then just get the stuff that you need for it at the same time. So then you kind of knock out two birds in one stone. Actually, I don't even know, I don't really know where I was going with that one, but yeah, I, I think I think you got it, right? Okay. The next one is from Dave with Dell 3836. He says, guess I'll ask two questions. One, what type of chemistry are you most passionate about, uh, specifically when it comes to YouTube videos? And second, do you ever see yourself working together with another channel? Uh, the second question I already answered, I would love to work with other chemistry channels. I would love to fly around go meet all the really cool chemistry channels and go work with them, uh, and maybe potentially have some people come to, to my lab and, and work with me. So, oh, excuse me. My bad, guys. Um, but yeah, I would, I would like to do that. Um, 
And then what am I most passionate about? Well, the most passionate chemistry that I am is the ones that work. When it doesn't work, I hate that type of chemistry. So if I'm doing some type of organic chemistry and it doesn't work, then I hate organic chemistry. If I do inorganic and it works, then I love inorganic chemistry, right? Uh, but if I had to pick without uh, regarding that, I absolutely love organic chemistry as my favorite chemistry subject. Uh, I don't like inorganic that much. It just, it's just kind of boring. It's just like pretty colors. The only time I really like it is like fireworks, you know, because that's some cool inorganic chemistry up there. Uh, analytical chemistry, I have a complete burning, raging hatred for it. Uh, and that's mainly because I just took quanti or environmental quantitative analysis and equilibrium chemistry in my school. I uh, did not like it. Did well in it, but did not like it. Um, just because it's just boring. You know, the chemistry lore for it's pretty interesting, you know, but the gameplay is really not so fun. So, um, yeah, I don't really like it. But, yeah, okay. In a nutshell, I like organic chemistry. Okay, next one is from... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It says, I love watching your videos. Thank you very much. Uh, and seeing you become a part of the growing number of experimental slash chemistry YouTubers. What inspired you to explore chemistry? You're about to get an insane lore story, so you better sit down and get some popcorn. So the reason why I got into chemistry, when I was 17, well, between 17 and 19, I had really severe depression, and I was pretty suicidal at that point. And what I did was I actually took a psychedelic, um, which was mushrooms. And when I took that, it kind of got me out of that funk. And it showed me different things that really kind of made me uh, recontemplate, you know, how I was thinking, um, different goals in my life and stuff like that. Um, and that kind of set me on the journey to pursuing chemistry. You know, I, I re actually, I was originally going to do um, mental health therapy, you know, or like a, psych um, a psychologist, like a clinical psychologist. I was actually going to do that. But I decided that it was so insane how a molecule could completely change some of the ways that you think, give you the experiences that it gave me, um, and, and just how such a small thing can have such an impact, and why medicine and drugs are so unique, and they're so different, but they have such vast differences in how they affect people. And I just thought that was so cool, and then I started watching uh, Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia, started watching that, I thought that was the most interesting show ever, and then I just kind of went on from there, and I just, you know, and that's actually where I got my uh, mechanism inspiration, you know, where it's kind of like on the screen sometimes, was actually from that show. Um, I'd love to go on a phone call with Hamilton Morris. Yeah, he seems like a really cool guy, um, and he just speaks up for what he wants, and that's really where the inspiration came from, aside from, you know, me doing the psychedelic. Um, but yeah, that's actually really just how it came about. Okay, the next one is going to be from Sarah Hun, 9096. They ask... Love your videos. Thank you very much. What was your schooling like, and how did you transition from pre-at-home chemistry to where you are now? Cheers. Uh, so my I'm actually still in school. Uh, I got about a year left before I'm done with my bachelor's uh, in biochemistry. After that, I do want to go to graduate school, and I really want to do either medicinal chemistry or a pure synthetic route. Uh, I'm not really sure what just yet, just because kind of contemplating which is going to make more and I'm going to be more happy in. Um, but I'm thinking about medicinal just because there's a three-year program at one of the school uh, schools near me and it's ranked pretty high for it. So I might go do that. Uh, and how did I transition from pre-at-home chemistry to where I am now? Um, I kind of just did it. I, I didn't really transition. I kind of just threw myself in the fire and just said, fuck it, you know, and I just went in and did it. Uh, I know I started small. And each step of the way, I get more and more comfortable with the chemistry. And then I would branch out and do more, you know, dangerous stuff, you know. And at the same time, I was in school, so I was learning stuff. So it kind of just like built over time to where I am now. So there's still some things that I'm not comfortable with. Uh, doing any fluorine chemistry, 1000% not comfortable with. Um, and, you know, that would just, you know, I need more experience in that field before I actually do that. Um, so I'm not going to do certain things, and that's kind of where I am now. So each time that I get more experience in a class, uh, or by doing it at home, then I can branch out and do even more, if that makes sense. Uh, if you can't tell by now, I do have ADHD, and my thoughts kind of go everywhere. So, but yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Okay, next one is from James Daniel 8619 They ask, hi, Kimdelic, love your videos and the work you do. Thank you, man, I really appreciate that. 
Uh, I have two questions. The first is, how do you deal with the chemical waste generated with your reactions? It's often overlooked in many home chemistry circles. My second question is, how do you acquire most of your reagents? Uh, I assume you're somehow affiliated with a professional lab which has access to chemical companies, but if not, how do you do it? Uh, so to answer your first question is, how do I do the waste? So I put everything into plastic containers. Uh, so essentially the stuff that I know can't go down the drain, I put into these little uh, like milk jugs or water jugs that I use from my distilled water. Uh, and I just put them into there, right? And then once they're full, right? Uh, it, of course you have to label, you know, generally what's in there, if it's non-halogenated or halogenated or inorganic or, you know, stuff like that. But essentially I label all that. I have my different waste jugs, pour them in there. When they get full, usually around six jugs, there's a chemical waste center about 20 to 30 minutes away from my house. And I just take them there and give it to them. And then they handle that, right? You really shouldn't be pouring things down the drain unless you know it's safe to pour down the drain, right? Like sodium hydroxide, if that's the only thing in solution, that's already drain cleaner. That can go down the, the drain, sulfuric acid, um, can go down the drain as long as, you know, you're careful when you do it. Um, and there's a couple other stuff that can go down. You just have to check uh, with your local county um, and see what stuff's allowed. Most of the time, you're going to have to put it into a waste jug uh, and then, you know, clean that out uh, or not clean it out, but send it to the waste company center. Uh, and then you're pretty much out your merry way for that. Uh, how do I get my reagents? I feel like a lot of people are very curious uh, as to, to how we get them, right? Uh, and actually, that's pretty simple. I just go on Amazon or eBay or Etsy or just any, any store that will sell it to me, right? All I do is I type in the chemical name that I want and then I put shopping and then it just shows me what's available or not. Sometimes you can do some really deep dives into different companies, right? Perfumers. Um, different stuff like that, um, or sometimes like painting companies, they'll sell some stuff like that. Um, and so that's where you have to get it. So you have to kind of do a deep dive search and you have to go to many different websites, see who's actually going to sell it to you. Uh, there is also Synthetica Chemical, which is a really, really good company. I've worked um, with the owner to get some reagents before. He's a really solid dude. He's even, um, I mean, he knows what he's talking about. So it's just, I, I like going through him too. And he has a lot of stuff that's really hard to get. So if you want to go check it out, go to Synthetica Chemical. And he's got some really good stuff too. But most of the time, it's just Amazon and eBay. Okay, the next one is from Midwest Chem 368 He says, dude, I really love to see something I haven't seen on YouTube yet. And that is a demonstration on how to set up a relatively cheap ventilation system that protects you from certain things like bromine or methyl iodide. He says, I actually use a gas mask and a lab coat with goggles and a ventilation fan with tubing from a plant grow ventilation system. It worked well enough to not smell the, the methyl iodide. Uh, I'd like to see how you or one, one of the other chemistry YouTubers, uh, how they do it, essentially how they do it without a fume hood. Um, I'm talking a little bit more detailed setup to show, or wait, hold on, I can't read. I'm talking a little more detailed as some show how to set it up, but not how to ensure you're safe with it. Newbies may not have uh, enough information and it's good to have that information. Okay, so I'm probably not the best person to ask because I kind of just open my garage and say, fuck it, you know, and just let the fumes go out there. Um, but when we go over the lab tour, uh, which will be later in the video, that actually will kind of go over how I'm going to be ventilating from that little lab area. But essentially, you kind of talked about it. it we are going to be using... It's kind of like a fumigation arm, right? I'm still saving up to get a fume hood and I'm just kind of using a fumigation arm right now. And that's just with a, uh, what do they call it? Like the, the plant grow uh, inline fans. So I use those and I use a chemical resistant tubing um, and that essentially pushes everything outside, right? I don't go, um, I, I wish I had a fume hood right now. I just don't. So. Uh, this is just the easiest thing to do right now to get myself safe while I'm in an enclosed area. I can also open up the window um, and open up the doors of the lab. So very, very good ventilation. And if it's something that I'm really worried about, uh, like when we do benzene later, which is really carcinogenic, by the way, then I'm just going to do that outside and the basically the atmosphere will be our fume hood. So that's essentially what that is. Um, but yeah, I'll go over kind of how I do it. But there's definitely a better YouTuber that can show you how to build that stuff. Okay, the next one is from Daughter of the King. Uh, how did you decide to start a YouTube channel? 
and were you a science kid growing up and what are your long-term and short-term goals in chemistry? So the reason why I started a YouTube chemistry channel is I really just kind of wanted to showcase the cool stuff that I was doing. I essentially put it as a log of the experiments that I want to try anyway. And I decided, well, I could just put it on YouTube and you know, if people you know, want to view it, awesome. If they don't, then they don't. I also have a goal of showcasing, or not showcasing, showcasing chemistry in a fun way. I feel like there's a lot of chemistry channels and no slander to them, but it doesn't quite grasp uh, my attention. Now it could just be the ADHD, but I, I really like when there's humor involved with it or in memes and for some reason it just helps me learn. So I just want to kind of have a fun chemistry channel and just kind of show that to people and people get, you know, I want people to get excited about chemistry and not just think it's really boring, you know? Um, I guess I'll go to the next one. Was I a science kid growing up? Um, kinda. I, I, I did a lot of like magic when I was younger actually. Um, so I don't know if I was a sciencey kid, so to say. I thought science was really interesting um, and I was pretty good at it as a kid, but I never was like a super, super science kid. I, I just like doing random things. I used to love going outside, climbing trees, running around, you know, just basic stuff as a kid. Uh, I, was, I like to be outdoors. I, I liked video games when I was a kid. So really more of the science started uh, to become more prevalent when I was like 16, 17. Um, not really much when I was a kid though. Uh, what are my long-term and short-term goals in chemistry? My, okay, short-term goal in chemistry is to pass school, um, essentially get that one year done. That's my short-term girls in chemistry, not short-term girls, short-term goals in chemistry. Um, that's essentially what I wanna get accomplished in that year. Uh, and long-term is I'd eventually like to own my own biotech company or work for a pharmaceutical company where they're working with psychedelic medicine. I think that psychedelics are gonna be a new wave of mental health treatments, uh, especially in the United States. And I really want to get on that. There's a lot of trials coming out with MDMA and psilocybin. And I'd really just love to work with that kind of stuff um, as that's just a huge passion of mine. And it helped me uh, when I was, you know, as I said before, when I was between 17 and ni uh, 19. And, you know, I really want to share that with the world if people are willing to, to be open to it. <clears throat> okay, next one is from y 33 t Y3323. Do you... Do you do chemistry for work? If so, which degree do you have? I do not do chemistry for work. Uh, I do event work and, and YouTube. So I just, I basically deal with drunk people a lot. Um, and I don't have my degree just yet. I'm about a year away from getting my degree and then I'll have it. Uh, I'd enjoy a brief talk about waste management from yours. Oh wait, hold on. I need to tell you who this is. Uh, Moritz, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, he said, I'd like a brief talk about waste management from your side, and did you ever have a more severe lab accident which had consequences for your health? Um, waste management, like I said before, is just making sure you separate everything that can go down the drain and what can't go down the drain. So I put everything into plastic jugs that won't melt from the chemicals that are in there. I save them all up until I have six jugs, put all the caps on, um, and then I basically give it to a chemical waste center, which they deal with it. So I don't have to deal with it because I don't have the necessary uh, equipment to deal with it. And they know more about the waste cleanup than I do. Uh, have you ever had a more severe lab accident, which had consequences for your health? Yeah, not really. I've been pretty safe with a lot of the things. The only time I think I've ever had a consequence was when I did the benzyl chloride. Um, for some reason, like I had, I had like all my, my PPE on, but for some reason it just made me feel kind of sick for like a couple days after. Uh, it, it was more of just like, not, not so much in my lungs. I just felt kind of sick. Um, uh, maybe I just breathed too much in and then my body's like, well, damn, that's kind of stupid. Right. Um, but it wasn't bad or anything like that. I just felt like a little bit more tired, but that was really about it. I had no other consequences. Like my breathing wasn't bad or anything, but that was like the only time. And I was ventilating everything and I refused to stay in that area where all this, stuff. I don't know how it happened, but that was probably the worst I've had so far. Other than that, I really haven't had anything. Uh, you know, knock on wood, I hope nothing happens, but yeah, really, really nothing too bad. Oh God. Okay, this is probably a question that I will not be able to answer, but gold ore question, is there a smaller scale home, uh, method that can be done to remove ore from rocks, reducing time spent crushing the rocks, and tediously compiling all the small bits of gold gathered 
before smelting into ingots. If so, are there chemicals needed, expensive or attainable? I have never heard of large scale operations, but not looking to do this enough that would justify spending a lot of money to do so. That was from Vlad Tipes5778. Well, Vlad, I have zero answers for you. I do not know anything about gold ore um, information. I know nothing about that. I have zero, like, abs like think of me, like, I, ha I have zero knowledge um, in psychology. I'm terrible at social cues. It's kind of like that. Like, think of my social cues as your gold ore question. I have zero experience with that. Um, so I, I literally cannot do that. If anybody else wants to answer his question in the comment, you guys can, but I have zero idea. So sorry, Vlad. Okay, next one is from Jacob P8294. What originally interested you in home lab chemistry? I saw everyone else doing it and I said, I wanna do it too. I thought chemistry was so interesting and I wanted to do it at home. And I said, I'm gonna do it at home and then I did it at home. Uh, that's really it. Uh, it's just really interesting to me. And then I could document it, I could show it off to people um, and just show the beautiful world of chemistry. And the easiest way to do that was to do the at-home chemistry because I could do whatever project I wanted. I didn't have to do the boring stuff that you're taught in school. And I could just explore it on myself. That's it. I don't know what else to say. That's, that's, that's really what interested me in doing it. Um, and also the insane fame for being a chemistry at-home YouTuber, which is, uh, you know, actually, no, never mind. That's actually a joke. You don't get famous off of it. Uh, unless you're Nile Red. Uh... Mr. Yellow Official, where do you buy your glassware in chems? Mostly where I buy my glassware is on Amazon. Uh, usually my favorite one on that one is Lab Asics or whatever it's called. Um, the distillation stuff that I really like, actually my favorite glassware is Synthware slash Chemtech. That is my absolute favorite glassware. Really, really good solid glassware. You can find it online, you can find it on Amazon, you can find it on eBay, and they also have distillation kits that you can find it on eBay as well. Um, I got all my beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks from Carter Scientific. I really like those guys too. Um, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, if I needed specialty piece of equipment, then it was either Amazon, eBay, or whatever store would sell it to me, which likely would be Chemtech or Synthware. Uh, and then the chems kind of went over that already. Whatever place is going to sell it to me. Or you can make them. Sometimes you have to make your own reagents, and that's a lot easier to do. Okay, Pope Balenciaga. Remember benzene? Benzene is back, baby. Not a, oh wait, no, that is a question. Remember benzene? I do remember benzene. Um, benzene is back. We are gonna be making benzene. The stuff that they said that they don't want anymore in labs, and guess what we're doing? We're making it, yay. Uh, okay, next one is Midnight Production 4679. Is YouTube full-time job for you, and do you enjoy it? Uh, and what was it like when you first started out for example, I'm just starting out and I'm using my phone camera duct, duct, tape to a lab, duct tape to a ladder as a homemade tripod, LOL. Laugh out loud. Uh, full, YouTube is not my full-time job. Would I like it to be my full-time job? 1,000%. I think it's really interesting. I love doing YouTube. Um, I mean, eventually I want my own biotech company or to work at pharmaceuticals, so that would be my full-time job, but I always wanna keep doing YouTube. I think it's really interesting. I love um, interacting with the community. I try to stay as relatable as possible, right? Because I'm not perfect at chemistry, let's be honest. Um, so I just, I just like showcasing all that kind of stuff. Uh, do I enjoy it? Sometimes. And the reason why I say sometimes is when my experiments don't work, I absolutely hate it. Uh, but most of the time, I mean, okay, honestly, I love it all the time. It's just when it doesn't work, I hate it a little bit. But then I, then I get back to loving it, you know? Um, and what was it look... Oh, sorry, what was it like when you first started out? Um, craziness. I, I, was, I think I was scared in the beginning, um, which I, th I feel like you, you should be, right? I was like, oh my God, what if I spilled this? Or you know, what, what would happen if this happened? Are the neighbors thinking I'm making meth? You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of scary my first time when I did it. And then I've slowly gotten more comfortable, but you should never fully be comfortable, if that makes sense. There should be a sense uh, a fear when you're working with certain compounds, right? Like if you're working with chlorine gas or cyanide or anything like that, you should have fear when you're doing it. So you stay safe, right? 
Um, don't just go willy nilly, you know, I'm gonna say no glove it and put my hand in a, a, a vat of hydrofluoric acid, right? Like that's just kind of stupid. Um, unless you're just trying to play with your life like that, but you know, have some fear with chemistry. Uh, wait, wait, what was the question? Wait, hold on. What was it like? Oh, it was scary. That was it. Um, and then yeah, using a, like, honestly, if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel, you don't need a fancy setup. Just get your phone out, record, and that's it. And post it on there. Just don't make the edits boring. Don't do like a, don't do like what I'm doing right now and just talking to the camera for like 30 minutes, you know, make things interesting and just have fun with it. But also do your editing in your own style right? Like mine is just a lot of memes thrown in there to cancel out the bad chemistry. And that's really what I like to do. Okay. Z-A-L-A -A Lancet. Do video on DIY lab setups, uh, kind of like improvised equipment. Show us, also show us how to make gold back currency to piss off the entire government of the United States. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. Um, I'm already pissing them off right now. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, I mean, we can piss them off just normally. I mean, I can just, okay. Um, I don't know about improvised equipment. I feel like I'm not really good at improvising equipment. Uh, I really can't help you with that one. But if anybody has any ideas in the comments, Za LA Lancet, you can go look at them. The next one is at J, 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 a lot of J's, A. How do you distill under vacuum at home? Uh, I use a vacuum. That is all I do. Uh, ham, I, okay, but honestly, you can just look at videos. Uh, I have a, uh, when I made the benzaldehyde, you can look at that video, uh, and that shows me doing a vacuum uh, distillation with that one. Uh, Hamza B3, what are some common sources for chemicals you can buy, uh, like hydrochloric acid from toilet bowl cleaner? Where I live, it's tough. If you are in Europe, I'm sorry, guys. I know like sulfuric acid is absolutely abysmally hard to get. And I think it's like, you can't have it, right? Or something like that. Um, so yeah, like common sources, if you're in the United States, uh, like Home Depot has a lot of stuff. Walmart has a ton of stuff uh, starting, like just many different things that people use in cleaning supplies. They also have a lot of stuff um, like hydrochloric acid. You can go get a giant thing at Home Depot. Um, sulfuric acid, you can get at Walmart for USA based at least. Um, sodium hydroxide, you can get there. I mean, you can get a lot of good stuff. Uh, starting fluid has ether and heptane in it. Um, and they're just like medical, so you can get isopropyl alcohol, uh, just a ton of stuff. So just look for the stuff at your stores. You can go to the MSDS page for specific things. And that's what I would do. I would be in Walmart and I just have my phone up and I'd just be looking up, okay, well, what's in this? Can I actually get it out of it? Right. If it was something I couldn't buy. Uh, Nam, Nam Compter Labs, hopefully I said that right. Nice, what route to benzene? Uh, sodium benzoate and sodium hydroxide, which is every route that everyone uses. And I'm gonna be doing that. Yeah, that's it. Uh, mixed breed performance says credentials, brother. Um, not, I don't know, I don't really have credentials. Uh, I'm in school, maybe that's sort of a credential. Um, but really all my stuff that I get is from procedures or papers. Um, that I guess do have the credentials. Uh, I've asked my chemistry teachers before uh, about certain problems that I've had um, and just maybe, maybe, maybe some lab experience that I've had in school and the lab experience I've had here, but I don't have my official credentials yet until I get my degree. But even then, you know, you're still kind of, there's so much to learn in chemistry. It's like, you know, yeah. Uh, and then John Grimsley 8848, the best question of the day. What is benzene? Benzene is benzene. There you go. Actually, hold on. Let me Google it really quick. Um, let's see what let's see what Google has to say about that. What is benzene? All right, this is what this says. Benzene is a chemical compound with molecular formula C6H6, composed of six carbon atoms joined in a planar hexagonal ring with one hydrogen atom attached to each. Basically, it is the common structure that you'll see in a lot of um, like molecules, it's that hexagon with the three double bonds in there um, that have resonance around it. So sometimes you'll see a circle in the middle of the benzene. Uh, and that just means that basically those uh, pi bonds are kind of just like, you know, kind of going around and rotating and stuff like that. That's just the resonance, right? Uh, but it's just a really simplified way of showing it. Uh, if you want to know the molar mass, it's 78.11 grams per mole. That's pretty cool. Um, that's okay. I'm not going anymore because I could be here all day. But that's all the questions. So 
thanks for listening to my ramblings. Um, let's go do some benzene and let's go show the lab. God, this is going to look so cringy when I do this. Give him the awkward wave. And, oh, maybe I should maybe I should do one of those like Y poses for this, you know, like the cringy YouTubers. Maybe, oh wait, I need to hit a smile too. God, that looks so stupid. Wait, 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 hold on. Okay, here we go. Okay, test two. See if we can actually get this to look good. Hit him with the awkward wave. Success. T pose, or I guess Y pose. Smile. And that's a winning thumbnail that no one's gonna click on. <laughs> I, always, I always forget that I have a mic on. And so I probably just say the most random dark humor um, like getting canceled type stuff when I do this. Uh, but let's, let's get started on this. Okay. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I know I got a mic on, but this is what the lab looks like on the outside. It's got this beautiful chestnut. Um, actually, I don't know. That's just the cheapest stuff at Home Depot, but it's got this beautiful wood on the outside. Beautiful non-painted uh, siding. That's also really cool. Um, this cool board that has no purpose. It's just on the lab. I guess we don't need it. This beautiful window that I can jump out of if there's a fire. Um, which, by the way, this, this locks from the outside. And if someone wants to lock me on the inside, they can. So I'm stuck in here. So that's why the window's there, just in case, you know. Um, the window opens up too. So if like the fumes get really bad, like let's say I'm making like cyanide, you know, for fun or whatever, I can just jump right out or I, or I can inhale it. I don't, whatever's the best for me, you know. Uh, damn, I'm, I'm not really good at explaining stuff, but um, there's a gutter. That's pretty cool. There's a gutter on here. Um, basically what we did, uh, my dad did a huge amount of this. Um, he really put a lot of time and work into this. Um, he would do it when I was at work or he would wake up early in the morning to work on this, or he would um, do it while I was in school. Um, so he put a lot of love into the shed and really helped me out on here. So please, everyone in the comments, go thank him. He did a beautiful job on this and he really showed his love uh, making the shed for me. So make sure you go uh, thank Papa, Papa Kemdelik in there. Uh, and he'll definitely read the comments for that. Um, fuck it, okay, let's do the next one. Hello. Now you're also gonna notice that there is a, actually I don't even know if that's supposed to be like that, hold on. Ah, okay, whatever. But you also see, this is our ventilation system. It's fully made of plastic. Um, and essentially, there's a hole drill. Oh shit, okay, that was not supposed to happen. Um, but there's a hole in here that leads into the inside. And this is where all the fumigation is gonna happen. Uh, especially when I get a fume hood, everything's gonna lead out to here, uh, into the neighbor's yard and stuff like that, which is perfectly fine. Um, and if I can get this open, I really hope this is a plastic that's not uh, susceptible to acetone, which I don't think it is. I don't really remember. Uh, I checked the other stuff and that, that's fine with acetone, but I mean, if it melts, you know, we'll just get a new one. It's just on the outside, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, this is where everything's gonna go. I'm gonna try to put this one back in here. Get it in there. That's what she said. Okay, maybe not. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Okay, here we go. If I can get it in there. This is the only time I wish I had smaller fingers. All right, oh, okay, that looks good enough. Well, as you can see, I'm in the lab. And this is essentially a product of you guys. All the money that I have made on the channel uh, really has been pushed into what this lab is. And I couldn't be more thankful and appreciative towards you guys. So I just wanna thank you so much for that. Um, we'll get started soon. I mean, most of it's just right in the frame right here. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple key details about the lab, kind of some of the equipment that I have, and then, yeah, then we'll make some benzene. Um, hopefully get a little bit of, you know, a little bit of cancer speed run in there, but, you know, it should be pretty fun. Uh, and we're going to use the, uh, well, the atmosphere as our, 
That's our nature's fume hood, just like uh, what Tom says over at uh, Explosions and Ire. Uh, hopefully I said that right. And let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Okay, here we go. Well, hold on, let me get the... I'll hit him with that one, okay. Now, what we have here, this is a good squat form, by the way. You actually want your, your butt to be right, right, uh, right where your heels are and then keep your chest up. I was a personal trainer for a couple years. So when you are squatting, just make sure that, you know, chest is up, your butt's kind of right in that little pocket with your, uh, with your toes out, and then really press into, oh wait, hold on. I'm sorry, we're doing chemistry. Anyway, you can see this beautiful orange, um, really obnoxious orange actually. But the good thing about this is that it's chemically resistant. So if I do happen to spill anything on here, it's not gonna eat through the wood that's on the bottom of here. So, uh, and it was also free, which is also why it's orange. Um, so this is why I'm, I'm using it, it's free and it's chemical resistant. Um, but this is essentially what uh, is painted on the floor in case of any spills. Okay, time to dodge the entirety of the glass on the ground that I haven't cleaned yet. Okay, now we got this side of the wall. Pretty cool wall. Um, also the ISO is probably crazy. So you're probably seeing my insane pastiness right now. Don't worry. It'll go away. Hopefully. Um, this is the, the ducting port or where everything's going to exhaust out of. That was that little plastic, um, square that we had on the outside. And this is essentially where the ducting will go into, uh, the ducting right over here is right here. Ah, and I just cut myself. Well, yeah, just cut myself. That was sharp. Um, well, hopefully I have my tetanus shot. Uh, so this is the duct thing. I'm going to clip that because that's sharp as fuck. Um, and I'm bleeding now, but the show must go on. So this is the, the duct thing. It is made of a plastic. I forgot what kind of plastic it was, but I looked it up. Uh, it is very chemically resistant to various different things. Um, shouldn't melt at all through any of the stuff, even if it's acids or anything like that. Um, this was actually for uh, woodworking. I found it online. Uh, all the other ones sucked, except for this one. Uh, it's, it's very flexible, which is nice. Um, and it should work really well when it goes into the fan. Ooh, wow, I'm actually, yeah, okay. That bleeding is kind of getting a little bit more serious. Guess we're gonna have contamination in the lab. Um, but yeah, here's the inline fan. Uh, I got plastic blades just because we don't want metal. You could use metal and probably be fine, but you are risking it because um, anything could spark and then it explodes and we really don't want that. So I'm using the plastic one uh, and it has pretty good uh, CPMs or wait, what's it called? Yeah, I think it's called CPM or is it RPM? No, I don't, I don't remember. Whatever it's called, uh, the, the flow rate. Oh, see, look, you can really see the blood coming out now. Um, but yeah, so everything's going to go through there. You don't want that spark because, you know, things going to explode, not really an enjoyable experience. Um, so plastic it is now I'm just rambling. Um, but yeah, here's the backdrop. Here's a plug for the fume hood or the fumigation and there's a ducting. Okay. Actually, I, I have no idea where to stand. This is kind of awkward now. Um, maybe I'll stand in the background. No, nah, I can't really stand in the background. Right, I'll just go over here. Yeah, this would be good enough. Okay. Kind of like I'm teaching from the corner, you know. Um, so I know you can see all of these tables. Um, this is this is a really bad look of what the lab's going to look like. Um, uh, my dad and I are actually trying to find these um, chemical resistant like lab benches. And we found one. Uh, we're just waiting on the lady to respond. Uh, and that's going to go exactly where that right below the um, the backdrop is. So we have a place to do a workstation for the time being. Uh, once I kind of clean up everything, everything's kind of disorganized right now. But essentially, I'm going to uh, put both these tables right under the backdrop, and then I'm going to film off of that. I'll probably spray paint this table too. Um, there's a lot of random stuff on the table, um, but don't don't look at it. I mean, you will be viewing it on the the camera, but don't don't judge me for it. I guess um, there's a lot of random stuff on here too. Uh, let's let's actually take a look. You know, I mean, you guys are kind of stuck watching me, so I guess you're going to get stuck watching this. Um, or you could, I guess you could just exit out, but who cares? Uh, probably the most, oh, I thought that was, okay. This is an empty bottle. This was the one octanol in the taffy video. 
Uh, what else do we got on here? Some random bull bullshit, you know, I guess. I uh, got some sodium metal. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know I was going with that one. Uh, what is this one? Oh, I don't have a label. That's very, uh, that's very not safe. Uh, this is actually copper carbonate. Uh, I used that in the purity video. Uh, this is the supposedly sodium amide, which is definitely not. This is probably just mostly sodium oxide. Um, because I put the catalyst in after I put in the metal, which I really should have put it in before. Um, so this is probably just a bunch of bullshit in here. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is probably, this is like random flavorings in here. Don't really know what it is. It smells really good. Um, but I just put all of the initial fractions in that taffy video in this. It smells, it smells pretty good actually. I'd probably eat it. Uh, what's the most dangerous thing I have on here? Oh, this one right here. I have fennel bromide. That's pretty cool. Um... I actually don't remember why I bought this, but I saw it online on eBay and I bought it. Um, yeah, I actually don't really remember why I bought that. I think I was going to use it to make um, benzophenone, but I don't think I'm going to anymore because I just bought like 500 grams of benzophenone. Uh, okay, maybe I should get into exactly what's in my chemical storage and some of the equipment that I have rather than just going off of the random stuff on here. Well, okay, let's do that thinking about putting this on the tripod but i'm definitely not going to because it's just be too hard uh, i guess starting on the bottom we do have some acid down here um that's essentially where i store everything um just a generally good idea to have it in a separate container i would like to get a acid cabinet uh, i just don't have it right now so it's just it's just in this little thing uh i can sense all the europeans are very very jealous with those two giant jugs of sulfuric acid in the background Sorry, guys, just had a flux on you like that. Um, before I get into all my reagents, maybe we can go over some of the equipment that I have. Uh, there is a special reagent in here that I'll save for the end. Uh, it's kind of scary, so that's why I put it up there. Uh, but just starting up here, I just have some basic stuff. Um, so if, if you're someone that's trying to get into, I guess, like lab work and stuff like that, um, don't, don't feel like you need all this stuff right away because you don't. So starting up here, we essentially just have a bunch of pipettes, like transfer pipettes. Um, they're plastic. I think it's HDPE plastic. Uh, or no, LDPE, sorry. Um, just some basic stuff. I still need to organize everything. Um, different stuff. Got some stuff from United Nuclear, like manag uh, mag manag magnesium powder, thermite, chromium oxides. Um, just stuff like that. Got some test tubes in the back. Now, this is my favorite part of the whole thing, and this is a, um, uh, what is it called? I can manually put the temperature in. So it's like an automatic space heater. It gets really cold. Random piece of lithium in here uh, under some mineral oil. I guess that's pretty cool. Uh, I took it out from a battery and I've had it in here for a long time. It's, it looks terrible, but who cares, you know? Um, got a scale over here, that's pretty cool. Uh, K-bar knife, that's just for like opening packages when I get them. Oh, there's a safety, guys. Uh-oh. Uh, I got some of this. Now this, if you're actually looking for argon, you can get some of this stuff. This stuff's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. It's just like easy way of getting it. Um, and then just like some other basic stuff like this. We're going to use this later when we make the benzene because we need a paint can. Um, random PPE. I have a beer, so it barely works. Uh, and then just some storage stuff, some gloves in the background, some way boats. Uh, what else do we got here? Oh, we got some little drum vials. Those are cool amber glass in the background. Um, and then we get into the, some of the bigger stuff. There's my cat. He's coming out. He's kind of cool. He got a little limp in the back, though. He messed up his thing. He's not really supposed to come in here. Don't really know what I'm going to do. I'll probably just kick him out. I guess, you know, he can come in. Um... But yeah, I got some other stuff. I got an extra pump over here. Uh, I got my centrifuge in the back. Uh, if you want to separate compounds, pretty good. And I got these tubes that don't fit in there because I bought them on accident. Um, I got a microwave. Uh, so I saw this really cool thing of a eugenol, uh, what was it? I think it was a demethylation. I don't remember. But it was a reaction with eugenol uh, and you use pyridine. Um, or you make purity in HCl, and then you use that in the microwave, which I thought was really cool. Uh, what is this over here? Oh, that's my little drying thing over here. It's just a little oven. 
if you let me let it focus. That's where I do a lot of my drawing of like desiccants, um, like magnesium, um, sulfate, stuff like that. Uh, I got some ball bearings. Uh, and the best thing about these, so like if you swallow all of these and then go into an MRI, you're essentially like a claymore in there. It's pretty cool. Um, I got some lead ones too. And then this is where all the important stuff is. Um, so like my heating mantle that doesn't have a controller. Uh, what is that called? Oh yeah, the hot plate. Got that, got a lab jack. I have two um, automotive um, or auto-regulating uh, temperature uh, heating mantles. I have two of them because I thought I broke one and I threw it away and then I realized it actually worked. So I dug it out of the trash. Uh, I got a vacuum chamber in the background. That's pretty cool. Hold on, let me focus. I'll just go zoom in. See, I've got a vacuum chamber. Got a little propane thing right here. Don't know what that, oh no, I, well, I know what it does, but uh, I don't really know what to do with it yet. I was gonna make a Randy Nickel um, catalyst with it, but I think I'm just gonna do some, I, I really wanna make like a blade, so maybe like a knife or something like that. Uh, over here, I got, uh, this is for ozonolysis. This is just an ozone generator that you can get on Amazon. Those are really cool. And this, the only reason I got this one, cause it has a tube that pushes the ozone through it. So I can actually control where the ozone goes and I can use it for ozonolysis. Uh, you can actually do an ozonolysis reaction on piperin, um, the black pepper extract. Uh, and I've been told you can get, um, uh, what's it called again? Piperinol from it? No, is it piperinol? Am I tripping? No, it is Piperinol. Ah, whatever. Oh, I'm just gonna edit that out so I don't look stupid. All right, uh, and then we have my vacuum pump over here. I have a ball mill over there as well. That's what I use in the gunpowder video and we'll also use it to crush up the sodium hydroxide uh, and sodium benzoate. Uh, and then I have a modulator uh, over here um, just because the heating mantle for this one, it's really good, it gets really hot, but if I plug it in, it just like maxes out, you know, it's kind of scary. Um, and then, yeah, that's just what I use for that. Um, I think that's really all my main equipment. Oh, I also have a base bath down here. Um, kind of harder to uh, give to waste management, but yeah, just got that down here too. Mm, that's about it. Now we got the, uh, the reagent closet. Um, yeah, you kind of see like we got some basic stuff in here. Haven't filled everything out. Mainly the top is, okay, like you're really supposed to organize this better. Essentially, most of the stuff on top is like salts. So I put a lot of salts up here. Um, uh, different types of like metals or sulfurs or pure elementals. Um, some sand too, because uh, for column chrom uh, chromatography. I also have the, um, the little silica stuff. I guess you can kind of see the, yeah, but I got the silica there. Found them on Amazon for like 60 bucks. Bought that one pretty fast. Um, bunch of cold packs, because they have uh, urea, or not urea nitrate, ammonium nitrate, uh, at least I think so. I think they have ammonium nitrate, yeah. But I think these ones do. Well, maybe I'll edit that one out. Uh, this, there's a lot of stuff that I do need to label. I mean, I have most labels on stuff, but there's some stuff that I kind of just forget, which is really not a good idea to do, and that kind of shows my bad practices. Oh yeah, okay, it is ammonium nitrate, because I have a big jug of it right here. Not like chug jug or anything, but. Yeah, I got this one right here, that's pretty cool. Um, just like some random stuff, you know, iron, tin, uh, boric acid, stuff like that. Now when you come down here, this is when it gets a lot more fun. Uh, what is this? I think this is my reducing agents. Yes, this is my reducing agents uh, and my aluminum chloride, uh, tin two chloride, that's pretty cool. Uh-oh, Synthetica Chemicals. Go get your stuff from there, guys. Not sponsored. I just like him. He's a really cool guy. And he also just has like insanely good reagents. Uh, yeah, that's my reducing stuff. Um, and just some other random stuff. I also have some uh, oxidizers here, uh, like potassium permanganate, uh, potassium pariodate, and those are in separate containers as well. Um, some random stuff that I use in my drug testing reagent video, uh, just a desiccator to get the moisture out, some cool scissors, uh, and then just some random stuff too. Um, I do have a bunch of iodine, uh, but I do have to put it in a different container just so it doesn't leak out and it doesn't smell. Um, and then also I have this crazy stuff, which is the chloral acetic acid, put that in a different container, um, dry food storage. I want to eat it though. 
Uh, but yeah, put it in there. Basically the stuff that I don't want coming out as fumes, I put in different containers that I'm really worried about. This one, I'm not super worried about. This is the TCCA. Uh, it just smells bad and it just smells like a pool and I really don't want that in, in this. Uh, and then just some other random stuff, sodium thiosulfate, sulfate, all that kind of stuff. Oops, oh, that almost fell, that's not good. Uh, here we go. Oh, it sounded like a dad when I did that. Okay, the other stuff. Um, so all of the starter fluids, this is where you get your heptane and your diethyl ether. I picked the 50% ether one. I found this in the garden section at Walmart. Uh, and there's just some other random stuff like citric acid you can get at your supermarkets. Um, bunch of eugenol. Um, what else do I have? Oh, you're not supposed to see that one. Um, just kidding. I don't really care. Helionol also has some really cool um, chemistry that you can do with that one. And it just smells really good. Uh, menthol crystals, DMSO. Uh, ooh, here's the cool one. Uh, I got some uranium, but it's uranium ore. So it's kind of mixed with some other ones. Got it from United Nuclear. That one's pretty cool. Um, and it's, you're fine. It's, there, it can't go through your skin. It can't penetrate your skin. Um, oh, what's also really cool, if you guys didn't know, DMSO actually freezes below room temperature. So you can see that it's also these nice crystals, but you just heat it up and it'll just go back. Uh, what else? Oh, and then here's the really fun stuff is all the liquids. So all the fun stuff, um, so like ethanols, all my solvents, um, hexane, pentanes, uh, heptanes, um, just all sorts of pyridines. Those ones I hate. Tetrahydrofuran, also got that one right here. Uh, hopefully there's no uh, peroxide crystals. Maybe I'll go shake it out in the back, see what happens. Uh, and then, yeah, just some basic stuff. Um, acetic and hydride. Uh, I did have a huge thing of chloroform, but I, when I did the Arecoline HBR, it kind of got messed up. So now I just saved the jar so I can say I have a giant bottle of chloroform. A uh, bunch of DSM, uh, just basic stuff like that. Uh, when I do get more reagents, uh, I will be upgrading this, but for now it works. Oh, let's go over the fun one that's in here. I'm not going to open it. Um, but we are going to be making lidocaine, and what's in here is chloral acetyl chloride, which is really toxic by inhalation. So it's in, it's in like multiple different layers in there um, just to keep myself safe. And if I smell anything that's pungent, I am running out of here. And yeah, but that's pretty much it. The lab, lab itself is pretty, pretty much almost there. Just needs a table kind of like right over here. Um, that's kind of it. I mean... It looks, oh, there's the tripod. That's absolute garbage. Uh, I'm not leaving a good Amazon review on that one. Uh, and then, yeah, just all my storage stuff. And there's the ADHD ramblings. Um, that's pretty much it. I also forgot to mention, um, here's how I do waste management. I know it's not the best setup right now, um, but there's these jugs and you can see the distilled water. And basically I just pour everything in there. Now it is marked if it's uh, halogenated or non-halogenated. Uh, and then essentially when they fill up, sometimes I'll put them in containers like back there. Um, really what I need is the big jugs. Uh, and then basically I just put them into here. Um, I should actually put all of them into here because they're kind of just spread out all over the place. But yeah, we just put them in there and then I take them to the, the chemical waste center. Wait, I feel like the ISO is crazy. There's a mosquito. Okay. Hey, okay, that was actually really awkward. Um, so now we actually have this set up now. And by this, I mean the fumigation arm. Now this is definitely a redneck version of it. Um, this is just a really cheap and easy way to control the fumes. And now everything, like I showed in the, uh, the last video, goes to that little port. And it's all set up. So there's a controller that's right over here. And then <clears throat> over here, so I'll take it off the stand, is the actual arm. So eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get um, kind of like a half dome cover over this. And then we're also going to fix this system right here uh, just because this is not the best way to do it. All that the straps do is just take the weight off of this. So there's no weight on right here and all the weight is on the straps just to protect the inline fan. But when I turn it on and I actually, I will turn it on, which is just by this little switch and I can control the speed of it. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but now 
Oh, there it goes. You can probably hear it now. But uh, maybe I'll put it up to the mic. But yeah, you can hear it. Uh, and it, it sucks really well. That's what she said. And it, it's just like, it's just perfect for fumes, right? So when I make the benzene, which I'm actually going to do indoors because I really want to test this. Um, so we're going to use this. And I just use, for right now, I just use a stand. And essentially, I just put it into the stand and it holds it there for where it needs to be. And that's essentially what I do. And that's just how the fumes are going to be sucked out. And then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So it's going to be pretty cool. And let's get started with it. So I'm going to try doing the, the benzene in this style of editing, just for this video. If you guys like it, maybe I'll do it again, but um, I'm actually going to be using one of these Coleman grills because it's really easy and you kind of need a paint can for, uh, let me actually grab it. You actually need a paint can for it. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all of these sodium benzoate and sodium hydroxide in here, put the can on. I'm going to uh, get a hole out here. Uh, probably just go drill it or just punch it in. Uh, and this is actually going to be our reaction vessel. And then I'm going to put a distillation setup from this uh, for the benzene. And this is just going to go directly on here. Oh, there you go. Just going to go directly on here. Uh, I'm not going to be using glass just because it's going to fuck up your glass if you decide to do it that way. But yeah, I'm going to use this. Uh, it should be pretty, should be fine, honestly. Um, but yeah, uh, and this, turns on really easily actually. All you have to do is you push that down and then, yeah. And then you can control the flame or not. And then you got the flame. So really easy. And then, like I said before, paint can goes on top of it. Then you're good. Okay. Well, I outfitted this just like this. The only problem is I put the cap on without the sodium benzoate and sodium hydroxide in here. So essentially everything is going in this right here. Um, I don't know why I did that, but yeah, it's, it's fine. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. And then that will go on here. And then we got our thing going. Now what I need to do, yeah, okay. Here's some sodium benzoate. This is food grade stuff. doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not going to eat it anyway, but so this, this normally needs to be kind of ground uh, into a powder. This is kind of already into a powder. You likely would get better results by doing that. The only problem is I kind of just want to do it without having to use my, uh, my motor. Um, it's, it's kind of dirty right now. I just don't feel like cleaning it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this little weigh boat over here. And we're going to measure about 200 grams of the... Uh, sodium benzoate. This will be where our benzene comes from. Okay. Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, oh. Okay. And actually, I don't think I have as much as I thought. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm going to write this down. This was 100.15. Get that one going. Oops, I opened up Google for no reason. Uh, okay, hold on, I'm gonna go my notes. Let's add a note. 115.15 grams of sodium benzoate. Yeah, I just threw that on a piece of paper. Okay, or a paper towel. Now all I'm gonna do is just throw this in here. It should work pretty well. Okay, I guess it sort of is. Actually, that worked a lot better than I thought it would. Now I'm just gonna get the second half going. Gonna do one of these right here. Okay. You can skip this part. I don't really care if you skip this part. It's just gonna be me rambling on. Oh fuck. Yep. We just got a loss of benzene. I have spilled some sodium benzene weights. There you go, a little redneck style. Ooh, there's some on the top. Ah, who fucking cares? All right. Okay, where is my sodium hydroxide? I think that Bush did 9-11, to be honest. Oh, I don't know where my sodium hydroxide is. Well, while I'm getting this sodium hydroxide ready, which we're gonna use 60 grams, by the way, 
I actually went on a date today with a very beautiful girl, which I totally forgot to tell her in person. So now I feel like a piece of shit. Uh, went very well, I think. No clue what she thinks. She said she wanna go on a second date, so spam W in the chat, boys. I don't know why that came out. But, okay, now we're gonna get 60 grams of sodium hydroxide. The forbidden pour that I just did. This is how a true chemist does it. They don't give a fuck. Uh, what do we got? All right, good enough. Don't care. Well, I do, but not too much. Okay, that's 60.33. Let's add that into our notes. 60.33 grams of NaOH. Okay. Now, same thing as last time. We're just gonna pour it right in. Which hopefully this doesn't stick to the side. I don't think it will. Uh, sodium hydroxide is hygroscopic, which is really annoying sometimes. All right. Now I'm just going to shake everything around. Get that mixed. I was going to do more, but then thinking about it now, is one, I'm just copying Nile Red like everyone else does, and two, I don't know how well the flames will get if I keep adding more um, of the reagents, but this is pretty mixed now. I'm just going to put it right here, and then now we just set up for everything else. Okay, well, this is what we got going. Uh, the only problem is I have a little rubber, um, it, it's, it's like these rubber adapters uh, when you use, um, what do they call it, like the filtration funnels? Ah, what do they call, literally on the tip of my tongue, I don't know, I forgot. But the, um, oh, that's gonna really mess with me. Not the Hirsch funnel, the ceramic, what the f is this called? I got everything set up. Basically, it's a simple distillation, uh, but we're gonna be using uh, a burner this time. I also have the fume hood set up over here. Oh, let me double check, you can see that. Okay, you can't see that on camera. That's gonna be right over here, so all the fumes will essentially go up into here. Now, the only problem, and I just saw this now, was the carbon monoxide hazard from this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to open up the door and make sure everything's fuming, uh, fumigation is uh, really well. Uh, I'm also going to get a carbon monoxide uh, detector, as that will help out a bunch. And then now I'm just going to put the water filter in, and we're essentially going to get started. Well, it looks like I got everything set up now. So, it's time to turn everything on. Uh, and then, you know, pray for the best. So, first thing I'm going to turn on is the exhaust fan. Get that going just because it's going to start to produce that. Now we can just turn on the actual stove itself and we'll just get that going. Oops. All right, well, we got the flame going. Let's see what happens, pray to God. Turn up the heat a little bit, well, I'll come back when everything's going. Well, just chilling here. Chilling like a villain. Um, I had to open the doors because it, it was smelling a little bit weird. Uh, I think that's just from the flame. You know, I know, I know they recommend to not do that indoors, but I'm definitely doing it indoors um, just because I have the lab now. Uh, periodically, I am looking over and there does seem to be a little bit of smoke production, and that's coming uh, up through the distillation setup and going into the receiving flask. So, and the exhaust is doing, or the fumigation arm is actually doing quite well. So I'm very excited about that. Um, actually, I'm, hold on, I'm gonna go check on that. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, the most immaculate thing would be me and the boys talking about life right here, right now. 
And I guess there's a lot of boys on here, right? I think my audience is like, what, like 99% men or something like that. So just think of it, think of it we're having a, a talk to talk right now as one of the boys, right? Uh, what's the first thing I should ask? Ooh, this, okay, now I'm put on the spot, now I don't know. Um, what you're looking for for a female? No, that sounds way, okay, no, hold on. That sounds disrespectful, let me try that again. What are you looking for in a woman? Okay, hold on, I'm not doing that, that's way too awkward. <clears throat> we can see an insane amount of smoke, and I know you can't see it, but over here, there is a small trail of the smoke going immediately into the, um, into the fumigation, uh, or I guess the ducting, which is a really, really good sign uh, that it's actually working. And we have, uh, it's actually called CFM. Uh, I looked it up. So I, I'm really happy about that. And I'm not actually breathing it in. Good news, we are having some benzene come up the distillation and down the distillation, or distillation, uh, the Liebe condenser, whatever. So the smoke has started to go down. I mean, we're still gonna see some, of course. It doesn't seem like the rubber is melting, which is really good. I was really worried about that. Um, yeah, I mean, we're still filled with a bunch of smoke coming down here, but that don't matter too much. Uh, actually, let me come over here real quick. And you can actually see the fumigation working very well in this shot. And you can really see all of the fumes that I don't want to breathe in get ejected out into the neighbor's yard. So that's really good. Uh, and we do have some benzene dripping down. Yeah. I guess we should also talk about like, if any one of you uh, is, is new at chemistry and you know, you're kind of scared to do it and everything like that, that's, that's perfectly normal. It, it could be kind of scary to do chemistry and there's a lot of precautions that you actually have to take. Uh, one word that I would like to say is don't be afraid to fail in chemistry. And to be honest, you're going to eventually. So, you know, if you're feeling that, you know, maybe you're down a little bit about maybe things not working out or you're not doing well in chemistry, it's okay. Just take a deep breath, right? I wasn't the best at chemistry and I still love to do it, right? It's always a learning opportunity each time you do chemistry. So my advice to you is just keep going. Don't think about the outcome. Just keep learning, keep being curious about things. And, you know, I think curiosity is really the, the biggest thing uh, to, in chemistry, right? Like, don't just think, okay, I gotta get a good grade in chemistry or I have to know everything perfectly because you're never going to, right? Just have fun, you know, talk to the community, talk to other people and have a really good goal and ambition for your life with chemistry if you really wanna do chemistry in your life. Right? I mean, for me, I, I want to do um, like work with psychedelics. I, I really want to help uh, maybe develop new medicines that are based off of that. And, you know, I really want to own my own biotech company and, and stuff like that. So, you know, dream big and shoot for the moon. Oh, I also switched lenses because this looks way better for this type of stuff. But you can see like it's starting to slow down just a little bit, right? We can still see some of the droplets, which means that we're going to keep going. But when you start seeing too much smoke and nothing coming over, that's when we're gonna stop. And it smells god awful in here, even with the ventilation. So I'm pretty much outside waiting for this to, to be done. Here's also a better shot of all the vapor going into the, the ducting. Okay, well, I stopped it, I think a little bit early. Uh, the smell was really terrible. It, the rubber was not a good idea to put in there. Um, I should have just got a new lid, to be honest. I thought the rubber was not gonna get that hot. It definitely did get that hot. Um, and I guess it was, that was on my fault. Um, I didn't really think about the melting point of it. But yeah, I stopped a little early, so this is probably not peak um, <clears throat> uh, percent yield, but you know, whatever. Um, it, it really, it smelled like someone just did a burnout in uh, the lab and outside of the lab. So I said, eh, maybe I'll stop it. Uh, and so, so I did. So let's see how much benzene that we have. Okay, so we do have our benzene. We definitely have something else in here because it looks gross. Um, so I think definitely something from that rubber or something else came over with it. 
Um, so that was definitely a, that was a my bad, guys. Um, but it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna separate it based off the boiling point. It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, first, we're gonna do a couple washes. I might actually uh, run this through a filter first uh, and then do the washings. So I'll probably do that first, honestly, because there's some, there's some solid stuff in here. Yeah, well, see, now I just put a little piece of cotton in there uh, into the separatory funnel as I, I think I am going to filter it. Honestly, it's the, the best decision. So I'm just gonna filter this through, which will take some time, by the way. As you can see, there's no airflow, so it's not going to drain properly. Put that in there. But you can see, like, we just have a bunch of, bunch of junk in this, honestly. So, kinda glad I did that. But, <clears throat> to get the airflow in there, I always forget to do this part. But all you can do is you just lift it up a little bit. And, there we go. Definitely smell like benzene, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're gonna do is once I filtered it, it it's really just, we're just gonna wash it with water a couple times, probably just two times, honestly. Uh, I know Niall Red in his video talks about um, that the water washing actually does have a benefit, but if you, I mean, if you really were in a pinch for some reason and you didn't have water, which I don't think is the case, then you really probably wouldn't need it. You still need to dry it though, but I mean, it's whatever. But I'm just gonna drain it real quick. You know, I'll open this up. Uh, you can see, the benzene, I put some molecular sieves in there. Um, it's about 50 on here. We'll probably lose some of that, honestly, um, especially with the molecular sieves drying it. Um, my guess is we'll probably get around 40 to 45 milliliters of benzene, but that's not too bad. But I'm gonna let it sit in here for a little bit, and then after that, you can just do a simple distillation. Now, what people do say, benzene does smell like shit. It, it smells like cancer. It smells like I already have it. Um, but, yeah. Who cares? No. I mean, this is really the, the end game right now, you know? So, just doing a distillation. Uh, and then that pretty much sets it up for the olive benzene. I mean, not really much else we can do. Uh, when it comes over into the receiving flask, I will put some more molecular sieves into there um, when I'm done. But benzene should come over around, I think it's like 80 to 82 degrees Celsius or something like that. So I'm gonna keep watch for it. Uh, and then when it's done, it's done. And then I can end the video, because this video is gonna be like probably over an hour. So you guys better have sit down the whole time and watch to get my runtime up. Well, I mean distillation is done now. The only thing is it's a little bit cloudy, and I think some water came over with it. Uh, I accidentally poured some of the molecular sieves when I was trying to pour the benzene. It was a bit Rookie mistake, I'll let you, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, and I just put it in there because I'm just gonna dry them again with sieves. I just wanted the clear product, which is really what I cared about. Um, I'm just gonna throw those sieves away, I don't really care about them. Uh, but other than that, yeah, the benzene's done. I'm just gonna put some molecular sieves in there and then uh, we're essentially good to go. Uh, the, now, what I learned is this thermometer is crazy off. Um, the uncertainty must be like, it has to be like five, 10%, honestly, like it is. It is not so good, it's like a really cheap one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest in a better one. I do have a better one um, that I use for a lot of other uh, applications, but this one is, is not so good. It was just around 80 when it was coming over, and so like, if I, so I don't know, I, I'm just gonna get a new one. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, there's benzene. There might be some other products in there actually. Um, I'm not really sure though. I have to run an NMR. Um, because the rubber did burn, it is possible that there could be some other compounds in there. Um, if I didn't use rubber, likely that would pretty much all be benzene. Uh, but since I did use the rubber and it burned, uh, which again was not a good idea, uh, that's likely most, mostly probably benzene, but probably a little bit of impurities. 
Uh, if I was to do it again, I'd probably probably not use rubber. And for this one, I might just redistill a couple times uh, at the exact boiling point of benzene, and then likely it would be better. And you can see that we have our benzene. Now, when I first did this video, it's, it's extremely cold outside right now. It's very, very cold. And so it had these crystalline um, solids in there. And when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, I, was, I, th I thought that was an impurity. But I had to look up uh, benzene's melting point. And it's like five something degrees Celsius. So it went below five degrees Celsius and it started to freeze a little bit. And it worried me because I thought I had the, that impurity, but I guess not. And we have our clear benzene after sitting in the molecular sieves for a while. So this is a definite dub. Uh, I actually had a whole entire video saying like, I'm so sorry guys for failing and all this kind of stuff, but I just deleted it now because I don't need to um, and need to post it. So yeah, this is a dub. All I'm gonna do now is pour this into a container with some fresh sieves and we got benzene. Uh, I just wanna thank everyone for always watching and always supporting the channel. I really appreciate everything more than you know. Um, and this is the first experiment in the lab. Uh, the next one's going to be lidocaine. We're going to make some of that. Uh, eventually, we're going to make some Benadryl as well, because I want to see the hat man. Um, and I'll also start dropping some more dark humor. Um, I, I have really, really insane dark humor, um, which is definitely either going to work very well with the community or not. Um, but I'll probably sprinkle a little bit in there, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, thank you so much again, guys. Uh, happy holidays. Hope that whatever, whatever you celebrate, you got a good time with your family. And if you're not spending time with your family, uh, I'm really sorry about that. I know it could be very hard during the holidays too. Um, but yeah, everyone just have a good day, have a good night. And uh, I'll see you for the next video.